Well, it's a big final round of the home and away season. Some surprises, some stinkers, some also rans going out with a bang and others with whatever it is that's several rungs down again from a whimper. Let's have a look at the pick of round 23 in hot or not. Footyology's Hot or Not is proudly brought to you by Trade Institute of Victoria. Start your future today at tiv.vic.edu.au. Okay, well, I was going to get fired to kick us off, but I'm sure you can do just as good a job. Start us off with a hot. Well, I've already mentioned Jack Fitzpatrick, so he's number one. I also like the Eagles at the moment. They've had big wins over Hawthorne and the Crows in the last fortnight. And Adam Simpson's got a really good game plan at the moment. I think they've changed up the way they um, set up around the ball at the moment. There's a bit more flipping of the ball around through stoppages. They seem to be opening up the play a bit more. So they're definitely a hot team heading into September. Well, the, um, the form line, particularly on the road, I think is the most ominous thing. They were actually they were one win from five on the road earlier in the year. <clears throat> now that's uh, I think five from or four from their last five on the road. So, and their last three wins have probably been their best three of the season, haven't they? G, you know, the last kick against GWS, really good win over Hawthorne, mm-hmm. and now Adelaide um, in that last game. So yeah, well, they were, they were a lot of questions about their hardness earlier in the season, wasn't there? Just whether they were up to sort of winning on the road and beating the good teams. In the last month, they've got their act together. Yeah, no, good call. All right, my turn. I am going with a hot to start. And it is uh, GWS, who we spoke about briefly. But um, I thought that was a really mature win over North Melbourne on Saturday night. Uh, they needed a win to get top four, and they did. And, and the Roos pushed them at several stages, and each time they responded. They played the better footy. Um, their skills are, are red hot. I don't think their skills uh, want for anything compared to any other side in the league. And look, the experience about them, uh, sorry, the uh, reservation about them in the finals is going to be experience, obviously. But I don't know, there's just a, there's sort of a, a super confidence about them that I, I think potentially can overcome that. So they're not to be taken lightly. Um, they, they get a Sydney derby and they've yep. beaten Sydney by seven goals last meeting. So, you know, they're, they're two wins away from a crack at a grand final. For a side and a club playing in its first final series, that's a pretty amazing achievement. So take a bow, GWS. Yeah, it's amazing how far north will fall, and isn't it? Like I think yeah. on the form ladder since round 13, they're in about ninth or tenth, so they wouldn't have actually made the eight. I think St Kilda would have been in the eight just going on that period of time. So I think they've won two of their last 11 games. And yeah, well, nine straight to start the season. Yeah. yeah, it's all falling apart. All right, your turn. As in a hot, hot or not? Uh, I'd go with a not. <laughs> uh, I'd have to say Melbourne's farewell to Paul Roos. It was terrible, wasn't it? Um, Melbourne has a nasty history down at Skilled Stadium of farewells. Remember the whole uh, episode there with Dean Bailey and his final game for the Demons? That was an impromptu um, farewell. That was an impromptu, <laughs> yes. Well, it could have been the end of um, the, sh- um, the chief executive at the time as well. That's another story for another day. That was a good um, call, wasn't it? They, they uh, kept the chief executive kept Cameron and Schwab. sacked the coach. Yep. Sounds fair. <laughs> So, yeah, for Veruzzi, there was a lot of good stories written about him on the Saturday, um, leading into the game, how well he'd done at the club and turned it around, and all of a sudden there's a 100-point belting, the biggest loss of his coaching career. So that's definitely something that's not hot and puts a few questions over the Demons heading into the pre-season and, and where they're really at. Yeah, no, fair call. Uh, you know, I still think the gains have outweighed the negatives, but um, really disappointing end considering they were a, a genuine chance to make yeah. the eight. Okay, I've got a a knot to follow that, and it's of similar ilk, and uh, it's Richmond, who uh, talk about waving the white flag. It's hard to decide which of those two performances was worse, but I think you've got to say the Tigers, because they just stunk. I mean, cop this for a three-quarter time score, 22 goals 11 to two goals 8. I mean, they were just absolutely uncompetitive. You could tell within five minutes of the start of that game what was going to happen. And, you know, they were very lacklustre the week before against St Kilda. So there's no semblance of, you know, finishing off on a good note or giving their fans any sort of hope to go on with. That's about, you know, I reckon that sort of first three quarters against the Swans is about as low as the Richmond Football Club's been for arguably 15, 20 years. Um, It's just amazing the extent to which that whole club has regressed over the last six months. Well, Damien Harwick's fortunate he's contracted, isn't he? Like they've mm. got rid of five oh, assistant absolutely. coaches in the last couple of days. There'll be some more changes there. And he, if he didn't have a contract, he'd be out. Yep. Which begs the question, sh- should he still stay? Well, I, I think look, I think they've got a number of issues. I think recruiting, um, junior development's another one. Uh, I mean, you know, they've sacked an army of assistant coaches. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, that just looks like a symbolic gesture to me. 
So, look, he, he's lucky. There's no question about that. All right, enough negativity. Yep. Bring us home with a positive one, a hot to finish off. I like how the Saints have gone about their business in the second half of the season. We, we spoke about them earlier in the year, just where they were at, really, in terms of the development under Alan Richardson. And it was great to see Nick Revolt finish the season with nine goals. Um, talking about Richmond and some other teams that really struggled in the final round, Nick really showed that he wants to be back next year. He was already contracted, but he showed he's still got a lot to offer the game, a lot to offer the Saints. Seems as if he won't be captain next year, which is fair enough and what's probably going to be his final year, but he remains one of the premier forwards in the competition. Yeah, good call. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, it's been a really positive year for them, I think, and um, certainly go into next season with a lot of hope and expectation, which brings me to my final hot, and it goes to Essendon, the club, and Essendon, their support base. And I can see people rolling their eyes. Well, you're Where's your beanie? Hey? Where's your beanie? <laughs> well, you're just going to have to cop it. Where is it? it. It was a good win. They played the most enterprising footy they've played all year. But I thought uh, it was as much about what happened post-game. And I thought how the club uh, conducted itself was brilliant. Mm -hmm. You know, they gave the... 10 uh, top-up players, a really good send-off. They all marched down to the Punt Road M where most of the Essendon fans were. Um, there were speeches. They kicked mm. footies into the crowd. I hung around out in the ground for a good 15, 20 minutes afterwards. Mm. And uh, it's amazing that a side that finishes a year with three wins does so with such positivity. And it's not all about the return of those players coming back. Um, I, I think it's important. The gains out of this year yep. have been significant both in terms of young players like... Parrish, uh, Tip and Woody, Langford put his mm. hand up on the weekend. Uh, one of the top ups, Matt D, has been absolutely terrific. Um, Lewenberger in the ruck, Michael Hartley. You know, there's all these pluses out of the year. I think they've really sort of revived the spirit of the place, mm. and getting the star players back in the lineup is just a bonus. So mm. they'll go into 2017, I think, with more hope than Essendon's taken with them into a summer for a long time. So they're a top 18 next year? Oh, not definitely. And and some people are saying they're a shoe in absolutely no way. I mean, you know, these guys have had a year off. You don't know what it's going to do with them. I still think they lack a bit of midfield depth and perhaps a bit of pace midfield, which ca can be addressed. Um, but no walk-up start by any means. But, you know, look, uh, they're obviously one of a bunch of teams who I think will be serious yep. contenders to improve their ladder position significantly. Yeah, now much to look forward to there. Yeah.